Okay, we're starting uh, section 7.2, work done by a constant force. Now, there are many mechanisms by which a system can be influenced by its environment. And the first one we're gonna look at is uh, work. Now, the meaning, we use the word work every day, but the physics meaning of the word work is very different than the everyday meaning. Um, in the figure, the force of F applied to a chalkboard eraser causes the eraser to slide along the tray. Um, so we must consider the magnitude and direction of the force. Um, so in this figure, there's forces in three different directions. Um, let's assume that the magnitude of the applied force uh, indicated by the blue arrows there is the same in all three paragraphs. The, um, the push applied in B, the middle one, is more effective in moving the eraser than in uh, figure A. In C, the applied force does not move the eraser at all. All you're, all you're doing is applying pressure on the eraser. Um, when analyzing forces to, de to determine the influence they have on a system, we must consider the vector nature of the forces and the magnitude of force, also the uh, magnitude of the displacement. All right. Um, actually, that first equation isn't supposed to be shown, but that's okay. Uh, in the figure, we see uh, an object uh, undergoes a displacement along a straight line while acted on by a constant force F that makes an angle theta with the direction of the displacement. So you can see the displacement is the black arrow R, and the force is, is the blue arrow, and the angle between them is theta. Um, so the work done, the work is defined as the force times the displacement, the delta R, times the cosine of theta. Now, if you'll notice, the cosine of theta gives us the component of force that's in the direction of the displacement. Um, so the work done on a system by an agent exerting a constant force on the system is a pro product of the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement uh, and the cosine theta between them. Uh, so note that the work is a scalar, is a scalar, even though it's defined by two vectors, F and R, um, the product is a, a scalar. Um, okay, if the force applied to the particle or rigid object can be modeled as a particle, then the displacement is the same as that of the particle. Uh, for deformable systems, such as a balloon, if we compress a balloon, the displacements are not the same. Now let's uh, look at a definition of work. Um, imagine pressing in on, in on the sides of a balloon with both hands. The center of the balloon moves uh, through zero displacement. In other words, it doesn't move. Uh, the points of application of forces from your hands on the sides of the balloon move through a displacement as the balloon is compressed. Uh, that is the displacement to be used in the equation. Now, the distinction between the definition of work and our everyday understanding. Consider uh, holding a heavy chair at arm's length for three minutes. Even though your arms may be tired, according to the physics definition, zero work is done on it. You exert a force to support the chair, but you do not move it. Force does no work on an object if force does not move through, if the force does not move it through a displacement. So in other words, if delta R, if the displacement is equal to zero, then the work equals zero. Okay, so if you're not moving, if there is no movement, if delta R is equal to zero, then there is no work. Okay. Um, Let's look at this figure. The F is the only force that does work on the block in this situation. There's mg, the, the uh, gravitational force, and there's the normal force um, in the opposite direction. But th notice that the block doesn't move in those directions. So there's no work done in that direction. The only work done is done by the force F at an angle theta to cause a displacement of R. Um, so if the force is perpendicular, such as the mg, the gravitational force, and the normal force, if it's perpendicular 
to the displacement, um, then theta in that case is equal to 90 degrees and the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. So there's no work done in that direction. Um, in this figure, the work done by a normal force and the gravitational force on an object are both zero because they, they are perpendicular to the motion. So this sign of work depends on the direction of F relative to delta R. Work done by a, an applied force on the system is positive when the projection of F onto, the, onto delta R is in the same direction as the displacement. When the object is lifted, work done by a, the applied force uh, on an object is positive because the direction of the force upward is the same direction as the displacement of its point of application. When the projection of F onto delta R is in the direction opposite the displacement, the work is negative. As the object is lifted, work done by gravitational force on the object is negative. So the fact that the cosine theta takes care of the sine. Uh, so if, applied, if the applied force F is in the same direction as the displacement R, then theta equals zero and cosine uh, of zero is equal to one. Um, so for theta equals zero, the work equals F, um, it's just F delta R because cosine theta is equal to one. If, uh, and the units of work are known as Newton meters. Newtons, so you're given a force, a force is in Newtons and you move it a displacement of M meters, uh, you, Newton meters equals joules. Uh, so one Newton moving one, moving an object one meter uh, is one joule of work. Okay. Now, work is energy transfer. Uh, energy is a physical quantity that is conserved. Uh, similar to money in check and in the checking account, money is transferred across the boundary of your account inward by deposits and outward by withdrawals. When a physical process occurs, energy is transferred across a boundary of a system. If, if, the, w, if the work done on the system and W is positive, then energy is transferred to the system. If the work is negative, then the energy is transferred from the system. If the system interacts with the, its environment, the interaction described as a transfer of energy across the boundary, the result is a change in energy in the stored, uh, stored in the system, the change of energy stored in the system. Okay, let's do a quick quiz. Okay, the gravitational force exerted by the sun on the earth holds the earth in orbit around the sun. Now let's assume that the orbit is perfectly circular. It's not, it's eccentric, but but let's assume that it's perfectly circular. The work done by this gravitational force during a short time interval in which the Earth moves through a displacement in its orbital path is A, zero, B, positive, C, negative, or D, impossible, impossible to determine. What do you think? Well, it's zero. The force does no work on the Earth because the force is pointed toward the center of the circle and is therefore perpendicular to the direction of its displacement. Its displacement is circular around um, the sun, and, and so that's a tangential velocity. is perpendicular to the centripetal, centripetal acceleration, and so no work is done. Now, let's look at a, um, another quiz question. The figure shows four situations in which a force is applied to an object. In all four cases, the force has the same magnitude and the displacement of the object is to the right and of the same magnitude. Now rank the situations in order of the work done by the force on the object from most positive to most negative. Now let's look at these. Let's look at A. So the um, the force is up, but the displacement is this way. So that's 90 degrees. So the, um, that would be negative. I mean, I'm, no, I'm sorry, that would be zero. The, that force is not causing any uh, of the displacement. It's perpendicular, so the cosine of 
90 degrees is zero, so no work is being done in that case. Now, the, in the other F, is opposite the, um, the displacement. So it's going to be negative. That one's going to be negative. That's B. Now C, the force is in the direction of the displacement, so it's going to be positive. Now let's look at D. This may be the toughest one, but if we look at the projection of F onto R, it ends up being uh, negative. It's in the opposite direction. Now, so what do we have there? From positive to most negative, uh, it looks like it's C, then A, then D, and then B. Let's see if they give the answer um, here. Yes, C, A, D, and then B. So it kind of makes like an N shape, C, A, D, B. Um, and the work done in C is positive and of the largest possible value because the angle between the force and the displacement is zero. The work done in A is zero because the force is perpendicular to the displacement. In D and B, the negative work is done by the applied force because in either case, it, there is, uh, in, in neither case is there a component of force in the direction of the displacement. Now, situation B is more negative, uh, is the more, most negative value because the angle between the force and displacement is 180 degrees. And the cosine of uh, 180 degrees is minus one. Okay, let's look at uh, a man cleaning, floor, cleaning a floor, pulls a vacuum cleaner with a force of magnitude F equal 50 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Calculate the work done by the force on the vacuum cleaner as the vacuum cleaner is displaced three meters to the right. Uh, now this is just a, I mean, most time you move a vacuum back and forth, but this one is just pulling the vacuum uh, at 30 degrees, three meters. Uh, now, we can conceptualize this as follows. The figure helps uh, conceptualize the situation. Think about an experience in your life in which you pulled an object across the floor with a rope or a cord. We can categorize this as follows. We are asked for the work done on an object by a force and are given the force on the object, the displacement of the object, and the angle between the two vectors. So we categorize this problem as a substitution problem. Uh, we've got all the data that we need. We identify the vacuum cleaner as the system. Uh, so we use the definition of work. Uh, work equals F delta R times cosine theta. The, the force is 50 newtons, three meters times cosine theta, and you'll end up with uh, uh, 130 joules. Um, okay. Um, notice in this situation that the normal force N and the gravitational force um, MG do not work on the vacuum cleaner because these forces are perpendicular to the displacement of the points of their points of application. Furthermore, there was no mention of whether there was friction between the vacuum cleaner and the floor. The presence or absence of friction is not important when calculating work done by the applied force. In addition, this work does not depend on whether the vacuum moved at constant velocity or if it, if, if it accelerated. Okay, this ends our discussion of work done by a constant force. Next, we will discuss section 7.3, the scalar product of two vectors. We're actually going to take a, take a break with discussing work and energy, and we're going to do some mathematics. Hello. There we go.